Welcome to London, Sam Felt. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you on Select with Heartfelt Radio. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be on board. And what got you in to tropical house music? I think I first got into that genre around like four or five years ago, but it didn't really have a name back then. It was just, uh, for me, it was like melodic house music. And I actually stumbled upon it when I first heard about a guy called Baker Matt, who's now a good friend of mine, with his track Zomer when I was in Curaçao for my internship. It's like a beautiful Caribbean island. And uh, a friend of mine played me that track, uh, Baker Matt Zomer. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. This guy is implementing organic instruments with uh, uh, with live with with, uh, with house music and I was like wow this is something new and I started uh, going online googling and finding similar tracks but it wasn't as easy as just like selecting genre tropical house back then because it didn't have a name back then uh, and then off like two three years later that's when I started Sam Feld I was like oh, I still really like that kind of music and uh, I started making it and the first track I made in that style got signed to spin in and then a year later I did show me love so yeah went pretty fast from there yeah yeah you started as a dj didn't you before you're a producer yeah so when you're jumping on collaborations yeah. do you have to get somebody's permission or do you do you just choose a song and then you go right that's it that's what i'm gonna do and then you approach them afterwards there's there's multiple ways to to go about it um like for example show me love uh i just went online found this amazing vocal by kimberly ann I approached her and was like, okay, can I get the vocals for this? And I want to make a track out of it. Then, of course, you have to get permission from Robin S., who is the original writer and singer. So uh, that's how that worked. But I've also done bootlegs that then uh, turned into official remixes later. Uh, and yeah, of course, if you want to officially release something that's already been done, you have to at least clear the publishing and, and make sure the rights are, are in order. Uh, collab wise, it's, it's different. You know, like when I really collaborate with a different DJ, uh, usually you start off with uh, somebody having a great vocal or a great idea or uh, just a great sample and sometimes I approach people I'm gonna be like okay uh, I have this idea but I think you're gonna uh, you're gonna make it a lot better if you, you jump on it and you want to do it and the other way around it works as well so you know about a, a lot of different ways yeah what was your reason to start heartfelt radio the idea came forth out of uh, my mixtapes that I was doing already. Um, I was doing a monthly mixtape that started with a quote and then it was like this, this journey of one hour through music and um, then I found I had so much cool new music to show the world that I was like, ah, once a month is not enough. So I need to uh, do my own radio show also because the radio shows or the radio stations were demanding it. like. We love your we, uh, your monthly mix, but if you re really want to have a show here and have a, have a program here, you need to do it weekly. So uh, that's when I moved to weekly. Uh, I'm still going to do the, the mixtapes once in a while, but not every month anymore because I simply don't have the time and I want them to be really special. So uh, yeah, that's the, re that's the reason. Yeah, because your schedule is crazy. You're on tour all the time. So how do you find all the music and, and get the time to do it? Like that's crazy. Like it's a, it's a combination of... A, a lot of different sources, you know, of course, uh, I make my own music first and foremost. Uh, I have a lot of DJ friends that send me stuff. I have heartfelt.me, which includes a demo drop where people can send me stuff. Uh, even if it's not released yet, I might be able to play it. Then, of course, I'm signed with Spinin', so they have some, some releases that uh, that they they want me to support. And sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Then I'm on so many promo lists for a lot of different labels like Armada and stuff like that. So there's just a whole bunch of different ways yeah yeah I'm also on SoundCloud a lot on Spotify uh, release radar uh, discover weekly all that kind of uh, uh, these kind of, uh, of play that's really helped to curate the show yeah I always take snapshots on um, Instagram or Shazam everywhere I go yeah yeah definitely yeah. Shazam is a big one and uh, of course the offline feature of Spotify I use it a lot so I have all these playlists a lot of lesser known playlists that get updated weekly so I make sure I Follow them and also enable the download function so then when I'm in an airplane I just can pull up Spotify and have all this new music to listen to and actually when I'm in the plane that's when I curate most of the show and just like be like scrolling through the playlist and all the demos that uh, all the labels send me yeah so you've got your new single open your eyes with hook and sling that's really really cool what, what happened there like how did you how did they get on board um, well, Hook and Sling is an Australian guy, Anthony, and he lives in LA, so it's not something geographically close to where I'm living so and where I have my studio. So it happened uh, over the internet, actually. So he sent me uh, a vocal and a cool uh, guitar riff, 
and I immediately loved it and my label loved the idea so I uh, started the production and just sent the project file back and forth a uh, hundred times or even more uh, until we found a version that uh, we were both really satisfied with and the label was too and uh, yeah it's, I don't know how many plays it has right now I think it's closing in on like 10 million so it's doing really well so I'm, uh, I'm happy for it. Playing it on my radio show? Well I have, a, I have a double album dropping end of the summer so early October it's gonna be like 20 new Sam Feld tracks three singles before that album drops and the first single is going to be with Inna, a singer from Romania. She's known for so many summer hits and it's also a collaboration with Lush and Simon who are two really talented producers from Italy. So that's going to drop on June 9th. So that's going to be the first single and then there's a lot of really cool other collaborations and featurings on the album but can't say anything about that yet. Just stay, stay tuned. I'm looking forward to this album. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be called From Sunrise to Sunset. So, and that basically stands for the idea that you can jo enjoy Sam Felt music any time of day. So whether you're, if you're at an, af uh, at an after party or just starting your day and vacuum cleaning your house, you're, uh, you're able to enjoy uh, one of my tracks. And that's the idea behind the. It's true, because I listen to your podcast in the morning and then when I go out, I put it on as well. So. Yeah, that's what that's what I mean. I like I like some songs are more suited for the morning. Some songs are more suited for suited for the pre-party. Uh, but the idea is that there's a song for any occasion on the album. Yeah, if you look at my Spotify list and even uh, at Hardfield Radio, I think there's a big diversity in the music I play and that I add to my playlist. Um, so yeah, I've, I've I've really grown up in a musically diverse uh, family with my father, you know, playing in bands and stuff like that. So I was influenced by a lot of different styles of music from a very long, age, uh, very young age. Uh, so for me, like what I really enjoy listening to myself is like folk music, like singer-songwriter stuff, uh, John Mayer, Jack Johnson, that kind of stuff, Bon Iver, and more indie stuff. So I listen to a lot of different stuff. Stuff that you produce, yeah. it has that inspiration. I can definitely hear that. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, I think inspiration is something that can come from anywhere and just like fl flows and. Uh, it might be that I'm working on a song and in that month I'm listening to a lot of indie stuff and I get inspired by that so that's why that's how the song turns out and in the end yeah and one more question for all the producers and geeks out there uh, do you use certain plugin to make that sound felt sound depends on what kind of sound you're talking about like I work in FL studio and then you know my tracks are mostly uh, built around like uh, strong piano chords uh, for that I use like True Pianos, Contact, Korg M1 for that old school hard hitting piano sound. And then I use a lot of live instruments, so I use a lot of samples. I go into the studio with a lot of live musicians, so uh, I could go into the studio with a guitarist that plays a riff or with a trumpetist or with a saxophonist and just mess around. Um, so that's I think that's what makes my sound really unique is the fact that I use a lot of live elements. and. Yeah, and that's also what I'm trying to do in the live show right now. I'm touring with the live, Sam Felt live formation, which includes a trumpetist and a, and a saxophonist. Um, so that's cool. It adds a, adds a whole different layer to the whole DJ uh, set. Yeah. Well, hopefully I get to see you this year at some point. Yeah. And yeah, welcome to Select. Thank you. Cool. Appreciate it. You're welcome.